again, welcome everyone to our Regio um, event. My name is Dunya Solari. I'm the Director of Admissions here at La School International School. I've been here for 12 years as a parent and uh, both my children went to preschool here. My son is in eighth grade. My daughter is in high school. And I have to admit, one of the main uh, reasons why I, I was so interested in La Scuola was the Reggio Emilia approach. So I am super passionate about this topic. I'm so glad we're hosting this event and, and thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I will let our team introduce themselves. Um, just wanna let you know, we have Q and A at the end of the meeting. So put your questions in the chat. If we have a small group, we can also, you can just at the end when we get to that section, unmic yourself and we can just talk. And um, yeah, I will be recording uh, this meeting so we can share it with parents who can't be here today. I uh, would love to hear from our team. So I'm going to first uh, call on people, Federica. Yes, thank you, Dunia. Good morning, everyone. My name is Federica Lentini. I'm the Early Childhood K2 Director at La Scuola. And uh, yes, we, we've been talking about one of our, uh, really, what we say, our hard, the Reggio Emilia approach. So I'm happy that, uh, to guide you through this wonderful presentation today. Okay, and I see Paola. Buongiorno a tutti, my name is Paola Barberi. I'm the admission associate at La Scuola. I've been here three years. Um, however, my journey started as a parent um, when my son was two years and nine months, and now he's 14, and he was part of the first graduating pioneer class of La Scuola. Wonderful. Silvia. Buongiorno a tutti, my name is Silvia Bagnacani. Uh, I'm the atelierista at La Scuola. Um, I've been here for uh, nine years now. Mm, I started in 2012 and I teach all the students and I'm originally from Reggio Emilia. Great, uh, Chiara. Ciao a tutti, benvenuti. My name is Chiara. I am the NYP design teacher. I also teach Italian in middle school and I am the K-8 technology coordinator. Benvenuti. Benvenuti, grazie. Okay, I will get us started on our presentation. And Fede, Federica is gonna tell us a bit about the radio. So hi everyone. Um, so uh, we're gonna make, a, um, we're gonna talk a, like a lot and for a lot of things today about the Radio Emilia. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, focus a little bit about what is the Reggio Emilia, Reggio Emilia approach, but actually what is, what is Reggio Emilia, what is Reggio Emilia? So Reggio Emilia is actually a city, it's a small uh, village, I would say, I don't know, maybe Silvia say that it's more like a city, but it's a city in the center of Italy, really close uh, to Modena, the land of the prosciutto and Ferrari, I don't know if you guys are aware about uh, magnificent Emilia Romagna. But the reason why um, this uh, quality uh, education was born there was because after the Second World War II uh, and in, in, in the rebuilding of the uh, Italy um, after everything was pretty much uh, shut down and on the ground because of the war, there was given some money to some women and to some men. So um, the men, they want to build theater and the group of really strong women that would want to build quality education for their own children. So there are beautiful documentation about uh, literally a brick by brick uh, building this amazing school that um, actually they are still in Reggio Emilia and it's been uh, exported like in the, in the entire world. So one of the reason also they're so um, uh, grounded in that, in that specific city is also because uh, a really big percentage of the budget of the city is actually going into school. So if you guys have been to Italy and please stop to Reggio Emilia, there is beautiful uh, actually artwork in the, in the center of the city. So you are literally brief, but there is the, literally like a children's city where you go and you, there is just like artwork of the children all around the city. It's pretty magnificent. So this is the place where actually this pedagogical experience and approach that we're gonna to talk today was born. Uh, next slide. So Loris Malagut, yes? You are on mute. I can see that uh, Valentina and Benny, our head of school joined us. So 
Vale, do you want to greet everyone? Ciao, Ciao Vale. I'm on mute too. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for finding time to learn more about what we do at La Scuola. Um, as you know, the Reggio, I often describe the Reggio Emilia approach as our heart. So this is a very important spotlight series that you're attending. And I know Fede is, uh, and, and all the team that you have here, are they are the experts in, uh, in the Reggio Emilia approach. So there isn't much more that I can add. But the one thing I can tell you is that I think it's a very, very unique and, and innovative way of approaching learning. I think the Reggio in the early 60s brings the attention back to the child and reminds us that the child is the true protagonist of the learning process. And this really continues. I mean, of course, you probably all know about the Reggio Emilia in early childhood, but we try and keep the key elements and values of Reggio all the way through the elementary years and even the middle school. And I believe as also the mother of a recent graduate of La Scuola who is now attending high school um, and is doing great that that frame of mind that they, I think they get to by being in a Reggio Emilia inspired school where the environment is the third teacher where they can own their own learning uh, really will serve them well uh, for life. And let's not forget the, the words that Loris Malaguzzi had on the first school that opened in Reggio Emilia, Italy and nothing without joy, niente senza gioia, is something that uh, really sustains us, especially uh, during these difficult times. Um, remember to find joy in life every day. Thank you, Vale. Fede. Grazie, mm. Vale. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and Vale, please, you know, if you want to jump in every uh, slide, go ahead. So this, this, um, this man was named Loris Malaguzzi was the founder of the Reggio Emilia approach. Loris Malaguzzi was also uh, actually a psychologist first and a teacher. So he was really literally working inside the school and it, it was just like observing and thinking about and how we can make actually this education more progressive, right? We were like in that, in that historical context. So it was literally trying to get out of the more tra traditional way of uh, doing school. Um, something that is really precious that he makes, he creates a poem, and this is actually in the next slide, that is called The 100 Languages. So Dunya, I don't know if you can move to the next slide. And uh, um, it's, uh, it's, it's a poem they create and where if we are reading really carefully, you can see it's telling about the fact that the child is not made in one way, but has different way to express himself. So actually 100 and 100 more. So that is the vision that we are keeping all the way from pre-K to middle school. So there is multiple way to express ourselves and Silvia will also explain, and Chiara, the idea of the atelier and uh, how is the teacher actually a researcher inside this uh, beautiful learning experience. And we can go to the next slide. There are two literally big value of this approach. One is called pedagogy of relationship and the other one is pedagogy of listening. So um, we're going to just focus a little bit about the pedagogy of relationship, where the child is the communicator, interpreter, and negotiator. We can go to the next slide. And uh, something that is unique is that you know when a child is becoming aware of their own ideas, the child really realizes that they are the owner of the idea. This is an entire process, right? That it's becoming a three years old and is going all the way to eighth grade. Um, also, it's becoming aware of their own ideas. It's something that is becoming, and this is why relationship, when they are aware, there is also others' ideas. So this kind of... Uh, um, I would say like a play and something that is going back and forth is creating this beautiful uh, discovering that others are also owner of the ideas. Through this relationship with others, children also find out the limit and the potential. So it's literally like a conversation, a dialogue between us and who we are in front of. 
And we can also go to the next slide. And here we can focus more about the pedagogy of listening. And that's the really literally the core. Uh, we are listener, the adults are listening. And to listen, we need to be present and not judgmental. So we need to be welcoming to the children's idea, emotions and dynamics with an open heart and open mind. Uh, and this is really important because every time we are creating the curriculum, because that's what we are doing, right? We have six units of inquiry and you know different subjects in the middle school. Um, the curriculum is creating from, I would say, from scratch. So we have central idea, we have line of inquiry, but this welcoming need to be literally, I, you know, we always talk about this with the teacher, how we, we don't need to influence their own idea. So we are here to listen and we are here to be with them in this learning experience. Also, adults give meanings to idea, emotions and dynamic, also being sensitive to that pattern to connect. The elaboration of this connection, uh, adults really develop meaning to create a new understanding so we are coming, they're coming with their own idea. We are coming with new, with our idea. How in this pedagogy of the relationship and listening, we are creating new understanding. So this is literally the key of this um, approach. And here, one of the, of the value of the teacher as a researcher means that research represent one or literally of the essential dimension uh, of life of children and the adults. So there is this knowledge building process that is recognized and really value. Teachers are literally the con constructor knowledge with the children and they learn with them. So we as a teacher, we know things, but we don't know all of that. Right? So sometimes we found that the children bring some amazing question that we don't have an answer. So how we are with them in this learning process, how we are learning together. So this relationship and listening, and it's literally there. And, um, and that will be continued all the way through, through the middle school. That's what we call like professional wonder. We are wondering together. We are learning together. We are to to storytelling together. We can move to the, to the next slide. And, uh, and in this beautiful process of learning, we have the beauty of the environment. So what, what is being calling, as Vale was mentioned, is that uh, the environment is the third teacher. So the interior and the exterior spaces at the school are actually designed and organized in an interconnected form that um, foster interaction, uh, foster autonomy, exploration, curiosity, and communication. Um, and uh, uh, I don't know if some of you are, um, I mean, so the space of the school, but there is literally, there was a big, uh, as Vale uh, as mentioned also, like a literally big study between pedagogy and architecture. So there is a reason why uh, that table is in that position, why uh, that material is in that corner. So it's actually uh, in interaction. So the, the environment becoming the uh, learning experience. So in the environment interact and modify also and, uh, and take shape in relationship to the learning experience of the children and the adults in this constant dialogue between actually architects or architecture and, and pedagogy. Um, and this is also happened through a multi-sensorial learning experience. And this is, Sylvia will explain about the idea of the atelier. What is the atelier? Uh, why does the play really a key um, and an important piece uh, in the school? Right, Sylvia. Um, so as I just said, I'm Sylvia. Um, I'm the atelierista at La Scuola. I've been here for nine years and I'm originally, originally from Reggio Emilia. So I was one of those lucky kids 
dad uh, was um, able to go to one of those amazing schools. And not only I was lucky enough to were born uh, in a city that really, really cares about education, but also I spent one year working with Bea Vecchi in Reggio Emilia at the Loris uh, Malaguzzi Foundation. Um, and uh, there's a quote uh, of Bea that we always love to use because it's a very, very uh, clear idea of what is the atelier. Um, Bea Vecchi was the first atelierista. She worked with Loris Malaguti and she was um, an artist. I mean, she was a teacher in, in uh, she was an art teacher in middle school uh, and also an artist herself. And then at some point she decided that she wanted to go back and learn uh, how to work with younger students because uh, she saw the amazing possibility behind working with younger minds and uh, how, um, you know, how uh, working together with the teachers and bringing a different point of view as an artist could have created this incredible and, and creative and inspiring approach to education. Um, so the atelier is a very special place where a lot of things happen. And the atelierista has usually a background in the arts. That was what happened in the 60s and 70s when Loris Maraguzzi and Bevec Vecchi work together, but also the atelierista. Be, um, we had atelieristas that are musicians, engineers, architects, biologists. So the whole idea is to bring a different point of view inside the school and work together with the teachers to develop um, plan, uh, projects that are like extremely creative and extremely open, where the students can uh, learn together with the teachers and they can inspire each other. Uh, another big part of the atelier is the beauty, you know, coming from Italy, of course, we are obsessed with beauty. And I remember that Vea taught me that uh, she was like, she, she told me, um, when you go and when you choose the materials you want your students to work with, make sure those materials are uh, something you want to use also as an artist. So uh, with the support of Valentina and the old school, we always had a very uh, strong idea of providing the students very quality uh, art supplies. Like I'm not saying like hyper-professional, but like something very close to what real artists use. So maybe having less, but making sure they are like something the kids can enjoy by using. Nobody enjoys using an old marker to create a, a work of art. Uh, nobody uh, enjoys to have one only choice. So what we did is to create a range of possibilities in terms of materials where we can have five different kinds of pencils, 10 different kinds of markers like papers and clay and wire and wood and stones. And you know the list is in infinite because he really connects with the idea of the 100 languages of the child where every single child can find a different way of expressing himself by using a different kind of uh, tool. And so the materials are fundamental and the environment. So we want to uh, make the learning visible by displaying our students' work. And that's a way of valuing them as learners and as artists and as creators. Um, and also being surrounded by beauty always make you want to um, do better. And uh, colors are very important. The design of the furniture that we choose are very intentional. We work very close with architects in Reggio Emilia, Michele Zini, who is actually the son of Bea Vecchi, so was born uh, surrounded by the Reggio approach at the very core and is one of the most important uh, Reggio uh, architects in the world, like he made school all over the world. Uh, and um, so uh, those are elements that are very important. And talking about making the learning visible, Dunya, I would like to move to the next slide and talk a little bit about an event that is very dear to me that started in 2012, which is uh, a Reggio event, probably our 
most Reggio inspired event because it's the final exhibition uh, where every single student at La Scuola has the opportunity to show and display his work. Uh, and it's usually a work related to a theme that we choose for the old school from pre-K to eighth grade. Uh, last year, we celebrated Gianni Rodari who is this amazing writer and journalist, and the exhibit was an online event. But the first year when I was here in 2012, we actually had the exhibition at the Italian Cultural Institute in North Beach when the Italian Cultural Institute was there. And it was called Walking Together. And that was our first uh, beautiful event. And the point of this event is to bring the school outside the school. And this is a very big, strong uh, element of the Reggio because, you know, Reggio schools are public schools and to support the schools, uh, they need funds from the city. And to make sure that the citizens were happy um, about spending a lot of money in investing in early childhood education, this, the, the institution, the educational institution, institution themselves wanted to, sh they wanted to show uh, the old city what um, it's happening inside the school. So they created beautiful events that were bringing all the artworks of the students outside of the school, in the streets, in the bars, in the restaurants around the city. Um, in museums and galleries too. So everybody could see uh, the beauty of the learning that was happening inside the schools. So it's a, it's a very important event for us is to not only make the learning visible, but bring the community together. As you can see, there's some pictures from uh, many years ago. Some of the kids you see now are graduated. <laughs> I see Matteo and Leo and Olivia now. There's a picture with me next to her Frida Kahlo uh, artwork and she's now in, uh, she's about to go to high school and that was, she was in fourth grade um, when we took that picture. So yeah, uh, the final exhibit this year is going to be about food. So we are very, very excited because it's a theme that we all love and we're all gonna probably cook together at some point. I'm uh, we're gonna keep it very international. We're not gonna make spaghetti and meatballs, which we don't even cook in Italy anyways, <laughs> but maybe tortellini and maybe Val is gonna lead us. But apart from the jokes, um, we're gonna have a, a wonderful reflection on food and how food is important for people uh, starting in pre-K till eighth grade. So that's, that's all for me, but happy to reply to any questions at the end of the, at the event. Grazie, Silvia. Wonderful. Okay. Um, and, you know, as Silvia was saying, you know, really Reggio Emilia approach is open to the community. It's a part of where we really share the learning process that we are doing with our students. And with we, I mean, both the students and the teachers. You know, Federica said to us that the teachers are continuous researcher. Sometimes we have students asking a question and then we have to find the answer together because we don't know it. But a part of all this research, we, as teachers, we always are uh, trying to find out a way in which we can share everything we do with class. How do we do that? Through documentation. Then in English, it's called documentation. And the documentation is really the moment in which we make the learning visible. Making the learning visible means that we really collect our inquiries. We really collect what our students are doing. We really collect all the languages that they are using with us in class. And we make sure that the learning process we are following emerge through our documentation. Um, if you have the chance to come in uh, one of our campus, you will see our walls full of photos, dialogues, uh, uh, paintings from the children, um, sculpture made by the children, and so on. Because we really think that it's important to make this learning process visible for the teachers, for the students, but also for the parents, for the community around us. The most important thing is also that documentation keep a track of the process. So we are really collecting everything we did in the past, but it also a way for us, teachers, students, and parents to be inspired by them. So sometimes what happens is that 
our students go around, well, they move around the school. Uh, right now with COVID, it's a little bit harder, but like they really go, they really spend some time looking at this documentazione and then they can be inspired by that. And they come to us with a new question and then we can go even deeper in our exploration. So this is a very important part of the Reggio Emilia approach at La Scuola. Um, we normally uh, share the documentazione with our community and uh, we do it weekly and daily updates. So in pre-K this year, we are each uh, class is creating a Google site that we share weekly with the parents. And we are also using an app called Todo in which every day uh, the classroom teachers is posting a photo and it's also adding a description of what is happening in that moment. Uh, we, you know, the, at La Scuola, the teachers really uh, highlight the process of the students. So we are always um, looking at the photos that we take in a very deep way. And the most important thing for us is to make sure and highlight the process that is happening. So what is the students doing in there? Why is it this action is so important for us? In K-5 this year, we are using Todo. So uh, Todo is an, uh, an app that is open for educators, students, and parents in which teachers can post photos, description, and we can even um, highlight some of the um, learning process objectives that we are using and that we are exploring every day. And in middle school, we are using Google site and digital, and digital walls. So, because of the COVID, you know, um, we were really thinking that this year the documentazione should, should still be part of the community. And so in middle school, we, in which, you know, our students are um, older and they can really go deeper in the process, we were like, how can we make, how can we share our documentazione with the community since the parents for safety reason cannot come or like the community uh, cannot come inside our classroom. And we decided to build this Google site that we are creating right now with our students in collaboration with our students. And then every single time we finish a process, we share that with the parents. So also the documentazione, it's a part of, you know, a moment in which we really uh, start by creating that, like just the teachers. And then uh, by moving on, like in the upper elementary and middle school, students become active parts of the process. And uh, another thing, so I'm here to show you an example. Uh, last year, uh, as I was saying before, I'm the design teachers and I had this uh, amazing experience with my grade six, seven and eight, so my middle student, my middle school students in which we were creating the Mission Campus Garden. So we're just moving this new campus and uh, as Fede said before, you know, environment is very important for us and the uh, environmental studies is normally in the garden. And so we had this great moment in which we were able to build a garden from scratch. We had the really just the basic base there. There was no plants, there was no shed, there was nothing in there, there not even the earth in which we had to plant the plants in there. And so we started, I did this um, uh, project with the environmental studies teachers, and we started by just exploring different materials. What can we have there? How can we uh, think about uh, the space we have available? And those are all the questions, provocative questions that we, I asked the students, and we were really working together in terms of like, how can we make this place great but also useful for us for our learning process and so we spend a lot of time just going into the garden trying different materials creating bases with different materials building rebuilding um we really it was a very great process and then uh, while we were doing it uh, we were also very lucky because michele Zini, actually our architect came kind of came by from italy and uh, we were able to share with him what we were doing. So in the photo, as you can see, you know, at the beginning students were using materials such as wood, metal, and we were in the garden. Then we decided to use also another language that was the graphic language that is super important for us. And so they started to create some plans. Then Michele Zini came and we shared those plans with them with him, sorry. And some of those plans were done digitally with uh, a program called Tinkercad, 
while some others were on paper. And the students had really the possibility to share what they were creating there. And Michele was so great because he really listened to the students and then he helped us going even further in that from uh, an architectural point of view. He was like, what about the sunlight? What about the size of those vases? What about the plants that you can put together? What, are, what about the, uh, the quantity of water those plants need? What about the shed? What do you think we need to have in the shed? And in that way, our students really think was, were thinking in a even high level in terms of, oh, we have to think about different points of view, environment, architecture, design, materials, and also the weather around that. So it was an amazing moment. And the aesthetic, absolutely. And so we then went back again and we did some other um, uh, experiment. In the meantime, we also got a very big uh, uh, mountain of earth. And so the students were the one actually moving the earth into the space. And at that point was the moment in which we really started to build but the good part was that everything was built by the students. So we, it was really was a discussion between teachers and students, and we were really learning together. I mean, I learned so much about planning that unit that I'm still using it also for my house. Um, you know, it was really a moment in which we all grew, grew, grew together. And still now, because we did that in first person, we are taking care of it. And then the other big part was also that we were building a, a, a garden, not only for us, but for the future children that are coming to La Scuola. So this space is going to be, and it's still, a community space. So it was very important for us to make that, make, make sure that we were all in there. So those are like really pretty much all the, uh, this is a documentation actually. So what you just saw was part of the documentation that I created last year. And for me, all the photos that you see here were really in that were put there with an intention to show what my students were doing, what was the resource, what was the learning process that we were using. Grazie. unmute myself I have some fun ch children's noises behind me so I, I'm, I'm going back and forth so I think that there's it's very clear and thank you all for presenting that there are so many benefits to this type of education and um, as I was saying earlier I'm so passionate about this because Reggio was one of the reasons I enrolled my children many many years ago at La Scuola I think it's a very very effective way to build an independent, creative thinker and learner. I can see it in my eighth grader now. He is, he knows he can learn anything. He has been given the tools to, um, to first of all, know his sources, where to find good information. We also make that clear. Uh, how to collaborate with others, how to research, and then how to find the best medium to express his project. Um, so I, I, I see that confidence. I think that is a really important skill. I think it's going to be incredibly relevant in high school, in 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 his work life, and in for life in general. Uh, so I can't. Uh, I really I see the result of this in my son very clearly every day, and um, I, I'm I'm a very strong believer of of it. And we see it in all our graduates. I I don't know if somebody else wants to share. I can say some just something that came up to my mind because as a as someone that was born and raised in Regimilia, the first question when I moved here, people were like, "So, what did the Reggio Emilia approach kind of the uh, the Reggio approach to education did to you as a student, as a person? Like, can you see some some results? Something that I was like." It's a hard question to reply, but for sure I can tell there was a lot of joy in in going to school. Like I remember that going to school was a big pleasure. Going to school was uh, fun. Going to school was going to school with my parents. And I remember that my dad together with other uh, people in the school, they built the garden in, during the weekends. So it was a real community effort. Like, uh, and, and that's what we're like doing at La Scuola too. We're helping each other. Parents are coming in and helping us. For example, now they're helping us so much with La Dolce Vita, one of our 
our most important fundraising. They are, you know, really, really in charge, like they are in charge of some fundamental projects because they want to help teachers and they want to help the school. So that's what I remember the most, joy and community. Well, actually, Dunia, um, uh, I, I see um, Ella Scuola Perrin in our board chair, Lama Nakma, on the school, and she may not be able to be on, on video, but the, Lama, if you are, I think it would be great for you to share things that you have shared before with us about the needs, really, of higher academic institutions and also like uh, companies that are innovative and that how important it is to have this, this frame of mind in learning for the future. So let's see if she can. Sure, happy to do this. I'm actually walking outside, hence I'm not on video, but um, I'm actually walking towards the school, funny enough. Um, so, I mean, I totally agree. I think, you know, I've, I've mentioned in the past that one of the things that I think are absolutely amazing is this notion of interdisciplinary education and how do we bring, you know, the, the math, the science, the art, the design, all of it together. And frankly, when I think about design, I also think more broadly about design thinking and how it applies to everything that we do. So, you know, I, um, I run a research lab at Intel that's actually focused on multidisciplinary research. And as we tackle a lot of the major issues that we see coming um, specifically around deployment of AI in the world, it's becoming clearer every day that the type of multidisciplinary education that we need to really solve these problems rather than just look at it from the one perspective of the computer science or whatever is absolutely needed. And as I talk to researchers and academics you know, at universities, these are actually um, the, the programs that they're putting together and a lot of the, sorry, a lot of the research institutes are actually going down that path because they're realizing that it's really that interdisciplinary education is what is absolutely needed for the future. I would make one comment about the, <laughs> the, um, the example that um, Chiara was actually talking about with, with um, uh, garden outside. I mean, this is one of the things that my child who's now in eighth grade, who was actually involved in this project, couldn't stop talking about, right? And, and for him, it's like, you know, being engaged. I mean, he's not someone who loves physical uh, labor. But being engaged in actually moving that dirt was something that was dear and near to his heart because he actually saw the whole thing, right? He could imagine this was a whole um, project that brought all of these different pieces together, like Chiara was, was, was describing. And, you know, he would talk to me about all of the different designs and, you know, how he's actually, you know, making it happen and, you know, how they're thinking of these different angles in terms of the um, weather and all these different pieces and and frankly in my opinion that changed you know overall like that approach that they've been doing at La Scuola changed the way that he looks at any problem whether it's actually in school or, or outside of a school right I see that approach in everything that he does and that I think is is absolutely what we need um, moving forward for our kids to actually change the world sorry for the background noise no thank you so much Lama sorry to put you on the spot um and I, I really think, you know, this, you touched on something that is also very important in the Reggio Emilia approach, and, and Fede, you may have shared this before I joined the call, uh, but this concept of having a holding and having a high image of the child, and which is really, really important. I think it's important for us as parents. It's not always what our uh, instinct tells us, you know, we always want to protect them, you know, they are our babies, whether they are in piccoli or in high school, I can tell you I have two high schoolers, that feeling you have inside does not change. But this is part of this idea of like letting go and believing in them, believing in their abilities and their capabilities. And, you know, there's, there's always some risk involved. And I think that will also make them take risks in their learning. So once they know that they have our trust, that we have, a, we hold a high image, we think that they are capable, they will, they will rise up to that task. And I think this is a, something that's so unique in this approach to learning. And again, like, you know, like everybody that you have listened to today have, has shared applies from two years of age all the way to uh, middle school and beyond. And so it's something really beautiful to behold when we see how our children develop and we send them off to other schools. 
Thank you, everyone. So this is a good time. If anybody has any questions, uh, feel free. We're, we're a fairly small group. You can unmic yourself and, and ask or uh, write it in the chat or privately if you like. We have a few more minutes. How, how big are the projects? Are we talking about like, you know, like building a garden that takes like the whole of two months? Or are we talking about like a lot of like week sized projects? Oh, the project was uh, for, it was three months long. And because it was interdisciplinary, as Lama was saying, we were able to work on it uh, at least five times a week, you know, because we were, you know, they were meeting, uh, the students were meeting with me and the environmental studies teachers. And actually the documentazione was really, the, the process that keep us posted all the time, you know, like active. And so it was, it was great. Yes. So we are doing that. Um, other than that, you know, that was specific for that, but every project that we do, it took a, a long time. Like it's not just one week or something, but it's an ongoing process. And does that consume all of their time or are they, you know, spending some of the time on the garden and, and their, their other time on like other Yes, it's exactly. Yes, they are spending some time in the garden and then sometimes in other uh, spaces. Uh, what is the, you know, the beauty and the positivity of the Reggio approach is really that we can move what we are doing, the learning process in different spaces. That's why the environment is so important because in that way we can inspire them in different ways, but on the same project. So I'm not saying, oh, they spent eight hours in the garden. No, we were just, you know, they were in the garden sometimes and they, they were with me in class and also like the language that we were using was different. Right. Yeah, but this is a good question, Max. I mean, I think it's very, really the, I mean, I think this idea also of the Reggio Emilia approach and combined with the uh, international baccalaureate framework, I think is very powerful because the IB is obviously a little more, you know, puts more constraints on the system, if you will. Um, and so I think it's really um, interesting because in the middle school, you go from this purely transdisciplinary approach to a more interdisciplinary. So if you walk into the school, you're, you, it's going to look um, more traditional. You know, there are subjects, you know, the MOAP has subjects that are, you know, published and we follow them. But there is also the possibility of connecting these units of inquiry that you are um, studying in each subject to the other subjects. Actually, the idea requires that you do that. And this is also where, this is uh, the Reggio is all structured that way. You know, it's, you know, people will say, you know, you're, you're just gonna, it, it, it's, it's like a meter long and a mile deep, everything you do in, in the Reggio Emilia approach. And I think, you know, the, the combination of these two is, is so very powerful. So, you know, and Chiara, you know, is, and, and Silvia as well, I mean, are, are, you know, very talented teachers who are really able to do that. I mean, they're going to be able to connect what they do in design and in art to English or science or math. Um, and this is what, this is what actually, I think, creates that mindset in our students. And, and what Dunia was mentioning, this, this idea that they can learn anything. And, and, you know, and they, they uh, you know, they, they, it's true, you know, they're not uh, scared of learning. You know, the, the mission of La Scuola is, um, inspire brave learners to shape the future. And that brave word, you know, we always tell parents that does not apply to is your child an extrovert or an introvert. The, is the brave refers to the learning, you know, so that they're not afraid of getting deeper, making mistakes, you know, going down their own path and then changing direction and, and then starting again. But thank you for the question. I have a question and I would like to thank everybody for this in depth. It's fantastic. And I love all the visuals. Um, can everyone speak to, or can someone speak to how La Scuola supports the, an incoming transfer middle school student uh, who is not used to learning in the Reggio Emilia approach, uh, but a different, more kind of traditional American standard approach in a school system. and how are the, the observations that faculty see it with incoming students, as well as how the faculty and the school supports those students who are getting kind of indoctrinated into this new powerful approach. Thank you. Who would like I to can speak? Them? Okay, I can speak a little bit. So thank you for the question, first of all. Uh, it, you know, when we, as uh, we are, are saying, you know, we are a Reggio Emilia school, but also an IB school. 
And the difference in the IB school is that in the middle school, we used to have interdisciplinary um, subject. Okay, so as Valentina was saying, it seems, to be, it, it seems to be more traditional. But actually, the core of every subject that we do is by inspiring our children while our children are inspiring us, you know? So what is going to happen and while there is the transition, you know, normally what we see in class is really having those uh, new children coming in and see us and their peers asking questions all the time, you know? Uh, I had, I was so lucky that I actually worked in both pre-K, elementary, middle school. So I, I see all the process in there and I can assure you that normally what happens is the first month they're going to be there and they're going to be like, why are they asking all those questions? What's going on? You know, like what is happening here? But at the same time, we really value the fact that everyone needs, has a voice and we want to hear that. So if they're not feeling comfortable to lead, to talk in a large group, we normally take them outside and we ask them just, you know, we start by, hey, how are you doing? Uh, what do you think about that? Do you have any question? What's your interest? And then the other important thing related to Radio is really that we value the language that they are using. So we have some students that prefer to talk in a large group, and then we have some other students that prefer to write, and that's also okay. And it's our role to really uh, look at those things and grab some interest in there and then develop this interest with them, you know? And so sometimes what happens is that, for example, you know, in humanities or um, like uh, Italiano, they write something, they uh, write a question or they write a, a very deep uh, um, uh, thought. So what happens is that the, the teachers normally, if, it's, if the teacher sees something in there, then it's, we are going to ask to the students, hey, can we share that with the whole group? I think it's going to be an inspirational moment for all, all of us. And, you know, normally the students, they feel proud about it. And so either the teachers or the students are the one that says, hey, why don't you share that in class? And if it's not like we are going to just say, oh, one of your peers just came up with this idea. What do you think about it? And it's really like, I hope I, hope I can show you the process that is going on. So we really um, support them in that. And, you know, the, the beauty of the Reggio Emilia approach, I think, is really the language. So everyone has a different ways to express themselves, and we really value that. And, uh, and just to jump on this, Mary, uh, you know, there is, um, as, Val, as Chiara was mentioned, is, is literally a process, like, you know, it's, it's going from day by day and step by step. But also uh, this year we have also this amazing uh, experience that is happening because one of the school uh, was one school that closed. So some of the kids from that school are actually were joined the middle school this year, coming from a different, different uh, kind of education, you know, different in language immersion, and it's been going amazingly. Really amazing. So we have that piece about actually observation of what happens if a child is coming from a different you know, environment to, to completely opposite one, and it's been going. And Silvia, if you want to go, I know you go. No, I was just going to add to what you're saying, because, um, you know, there's a big group of students that came in eighth grade from uh, La Escuela. Uh, you know, they found themselves in a completely different situation. But like us as teachers uh, have so many meetings about, you know, making sure that we're doing our best to, to you know, uh, make sure that these students are thriving. Um, our um, Doug Launi, the director of the middle school, always like, you know, calls meetings based on that topic, like, you know, um, making sure that we are doing our best for these students and what are the strategies that we can, uh, and it's a collective effort. And as teachers, we spend a lot of time on planning together and sharing and talking to each other. We have weekly meetings where we mostly talk about this kind of situation and the decisions are like communal, like we all participate on, on bringing, you know, our own experience with that class. And Before I'm happy to put you in touch with some parents of children who have transitioned in yeah. middle school from other programs. So let me know if you're interested and in, we have parents you can contact. I think there was just one more question about if also they're doing individual projects or is just mostly collaborative projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Betty, do you want do you want yeah. to reply to this? One of you oh, sorry. Wanna shout out, Sylvia, if you guys want to. Sure. I, I, okay, great. So uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I, I probably, I don't want to say, oh, they are more individual or more collaborative because we really depends on what we are doing. For sure, the collaborative projects are a very big, uh, are very important for us, but there are also moments in which our students are doing something individually. So um, there is really a balance in that. What also happens is that sometimes we have really a big project in it. And then what we said to them is like, work on how you want to express your idea. And so in that moment is an individual project, part of a collaborative project, you know? So they are really inter uh, together, like how together. <laughs> Great, thank you. All right, I want to be mindful of your time. We're still here for a few questions. If you want to join us, if you have to leave, thank you very much for joining us today and come back for more events. Ciao, ciao. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Grazie a tutti. Grazie. Bye. Grazie.